Day number three of week 11 saw really some one-sided matchups on the docket as FaZe would go up against Enigma 6. Evil Genius is looking to keep their reign successful as they'd go up against units. Splice would prove their worth versus, well, not a team worth proving their worth to. And how good is this Luminosity team? They would go up against 100 Thieves. The breakdown plus betting predictions and more for day four coming up. Well, like I mentioned, friends and family, I hold shift here. Welcome back, COD fans, as we will have ourselves the week three, pardon me, week 11, day three breakdown here. It is week three of the cross division. That's where all my numbers got mixed up. And like I mentioned, a lot of the matches should have been pretty one-dimensional. One At least that's what we would have expected going into it. This is probably the most lopsided day that we had with really the exception of the last match. But let's go ahead and break things down, taking a look at what the breakdown will include. As we started with FaZe going up against Enigma 6, Evil Geniuses would take on the EU Juggernaut of Units, and then Splice going up against EYU, and then we'll be dealing with really the pinnacle of the day, appropriate since it was the conclusion as well, 100 Thieves and Luminosity seeing how good that Luminosity squad would potentially be. So let's take a look at things, starting off with FaZe Clan and Enigma 6. It would start off on the hard point of frequency, and Mayhem would actually look really nice for Enigma 6. But FaZe was playing a full game with just about all five players playing at a high level, with the exception of Asim. He did not have a great map this one. And it was a pretty tight game going into the third rotation, as God or X would get full streaks. But then past that, they could not break the P3, could Enigma 6, and FaZe would hold on to a very narrow lead, but big shouts to Mayhem, who really did play lights out, and that's what you expect from that player who stuck around with Enigma 6. You were building the core off of him being there, so the fact that he was able to find some success finally uh, was definitely good for Enigma 6, but not quite able to eke out a win against FaZe on the hard but a very, very close set. We go over to the Search and Destroy plate on Hacienda next, and once again, Enigma 6 would look really good. Looked convincing. They would start up 2-0. FaZe, though, would start to clutch up, and then things would go round for round until we got to round 11. And again, just the outslaying potential that FaZe has on that roster really came down to a lot of those clutch moments. FaZe would finish things up and take a 2-0 lead in the series after the 6-5 win on Search. Going over to map number three, the potential 3-0 sweep for FaZe would happen on frequency for the control. And again, Enigma 6 started off pretty well. But again, like I mentioned in the Hacienda hard or Search and Destroy, the individual gun skill was just too much, and it really did show a lot with a lot of big moments from a ton of individuals. And again, if you're Enigma 6, you cannot take face-up individual gunfights against a squad like FaZe because they will likely win them. And so, such is the case with most of our top five teams at the moment. You have to hit together. You have to find execute calls. FaZe was just a better team today. Enigma 6 looked good, though. Again, the hard point in search going back and forth as much as it did versus a good team like FaZe, I think goes to show that this Enigma 6 team can do well. Their control has not been very good. So the 250 to 234, 6 to 5 search, and then 3-0 control. FaZe take the set 3 to nothing. So, again, you look back on Enigma 6's week so far. It was a 1-3 loss to Luminosity, a 3-1 win versus UYU. They'll get evil geniuses tomorrow and honestly, what could be a very good game. Going over to our next set, it will be evil geniuses, speaking of, going up against units. And honestly, this one, you would have figured evil geniuses, based on how they had looked, you would think they would be vastly in control of this. However, evil geniuses have not been very good in the hard point. And that's, of course, where we'd start off on frequency, is it would start off very back and forth, but Exotic had an absolutely atrocious start, starting off 1-11, and 11, allowing units to essentially go off. Joe would pop off having 30-plus kills by the end of the third rotation, and it really came down to this one last play as Evil Geniuses were trying to break into P3. A little wombo combo finish from units, though, would give them the eking win. It was close. A very close set, 209-250, the final score of the hard point. Going over to Search and Destroy, units have looked atrocious here. And at the start, the rounds were very even, and you'd think, hey, maybe units got a little bit better. But Evil Geniuses, honestly, just the more prepared team with a lot more set pieces than units were able to go through. And honestly, a couple of clutch moments allow just routine numbers advantages for evil geniuses they would be able to find some streaks and things of that sort and then again just having the advantage round after round they would find this one relatively easy going six to two over to control arsenal again very back and forth to start but this is the one control map 
that Evil Geniuses thrives. On Arsenal, they're perfect so far. The last times they've played them with this roster, they went, or not this roster, but the last times they've played them since making swaps after London, they were 3-0 and four separate times on Arsenal. They would find themselves another convincing win here because, honestly, it was just sheer punish all over the map come round three and round four when specialists were coming out for units. Pretty easy peasy. Evil Geniuses would find the 3-1. Back to hard point. Again, Evil Geniuses have only split hard points, really, throughout this entire cross-divisional. They need to find a way to do better, and they would go to gridlock where things would get super scrappy all the way through as Evil Geniuses would eventually find themselves getting broken by Kami time and time again, earlier than they need them to be broken, and units would be able to find a narrow lead. By the end, though, it would come down to one more EG hold on Tree and Broken versus one potential units break for the units to find the win. Again, Evil Geniuses holding the back spawns for Broken were not quite able to hold off the rest of units from the front. And honestly, units just looking really good when it comes to how they've been breaking hills over the last couple of days. Of course, over the course of this cross divisional, they are now four in one and hardpoint looking really clean there. So we'd send things to a map number five after the 250 to 241 win on gridlock. It'd go to Arsenal. And honestly, just again, we'll keep this one short. Evil Geniuses just looked like the more prepared team. Bigger plays overall from individuals as well as Exotic, Attach, and Apathy were all having some pop-off moments. And it would be another 6-2 in the search. So what units have been struggling in a search, that would be their downfall. Evil Geniuses still struggling to close out hard points, but they've been coming so close. Their averages are actually not so bad, but you have to be able to clean things up especially as you go into tomorrow, but Evil Geniuses will find the win 3-2. to two. Over to Splice in UYU. <sighs> I don't know what else I can say about UYU besides that this team is absolutely atrocious. It would start things off on Hardpoint Seaside. How do you let this map go through after what Splice were just previously able to do on Seaside over the last two days to both EG and FaZe? UIU would find out exactly what was going wrong and why that was not a good pick as they would only find some success on the Fountain Hill. They'd eventually put together a couple of nice hills near the end, but UIU literally before the match had said that they weren't expecting to win a single game this week. What? Good roster move. Solo shells everywhere. Methods was the only one to go positive for UIU. Easy 250 to 176 for Splice. s and Hacienda. Next, 6-3 Splice. UIU looked terrible. Control Seaside, though. How about some more Huke Love? He was able to go 36-17 and 17 with a handful of just absolutely stupid solo plays. I don't know what you do to counter it, but UIU didn't have a response for it. Honestly, UIU is just not good at all. Methods was the only one positive on the control again. 3-1 the score. UIU is not going to win a set for the rest of the year. Call, I'm calling it right now. So going over to our final match of the day, it would be LG and 100 Thieves. How good is this LG team? That was the question we wanted to know. Well, it started off on the hard point of frequency, and honestly, it did not look good for Luminosity to start things off. 100 Thieves off the rip looking insane. Brack was having a much harder time as he was not able to win many Maddox gunfights that he was getting used to, I think, being up here, playing up against other teams. But the good news for Luminosity was that John and Slack played relatively well, just not well enough to make a difference, especially when you have Octane, Priesta, and Slash are going 27 and 20, 31 and 22, and 27 and 24, respectively. Too hard, 250, 188, Search and Destroy, Gridlock. Again, 100 Thieves would go up 6-3, or pardon me, 5-3, but again, they would let a handful of rounds go, including having streaks on round 11 that were essentially wasted. We'd go to round 11, like I mentioned, but LG would get attack five mid fight, pop it and clean things up. LG would punish 100 Thieves for not being clean on search and destroy again, a 6 5 win in round 11. So we would go to control. That one played on frequency, a map that Luminosity has been okay at, but for 100 Thieves, They've also been doing, this is this is probably one of their best control maps, honestly. So a little bit questionable to go here in the first place. But Luminosity would be able to go neck and neck 
with 100 Thieves, sending it all the way to a round 5, all of the rounds going to relatively low numbers against relatively low numbers, like 5 on 2s, 5 on 3s, things of that nature. 100 Thieves would be actually very narrowly about to lose round number 5, but would clutch things up in the nick of time. So what should have been a 3-0 would see it go to a round number 4. That would be played on Arsenal. A hard point that 100 Thieves was notoriously unstoppable at, but earlier this week lost to Evil Geniuses on this map to the tune of a 199 to 250. And Bracken Skies, they started to show up and they popped all over 100 Thieves as Luminosity actually pulled out a 5 AR setup, two long range ARs, and then three Maddoxes, and it worked. It worked great. Insane to see it be used, but it worked great. 100 Thieves were having a really tough time breaking hills, and Luminosity would run over 100 Thieves, finding a 250-173 to 173 map number 5. Skies and Brack finding all of the fuego from the last two maps, coming in hot by round 3, through round number 3. They were 5-1 and 6-1, and and respectively. But still, 100 Thieves would be able to find enough rounds, just barely. These rounds were very, very close to go up 5-3 again. But this time, they would be able to clutch up in the last uh, in the last round, finding themselves a 6-3 win. But goodness, did Luminosity look great. Let's go ahead and break down the games for tomorrow for you guys as we try to wrap things up pretty quickly. We'll have FaZe taking on the unit squad. And honestly... Maybe some considerations here because FaZe has looked vulnerable in their hard point and respawn as a whole as they found themselves an 0-3 versus 100 Thieves in the control and a 2-3 loss to Splice. Units have been looking relatively good in their hard point, and specifically as they average 236 points for them, actually really, really good, to only giving up to 11. The biggest issue for this units team comes down to the search and destroy. FaZe has not been great in the search, but they've been better than what Units has been able to put up. The 4.13 for them, where Units only finds 2.25 rounds. That hurts. And FaZe, honestly, obviously the better, honestly and obviously the better control team here as well. Units are going to have a tall task in front of them. But if they're going to be done, you need to be able to win at least the first hard point if your Units start their set off in your favor. Going to our second match, it'll be Evil Geniuses going up against Enigma 6. And again, predictions will be held to our betting lines. But for Evil Geniuses, I think you have to be a little bit worried about Enigma 6, to be completely candid. Enigma 6 has been looking pretty solid. 222 for their average for them for the hard point. They've also picked things up a little bit in the search and destroy, even though they're 1-2. and two, They've gone pretty far the distance, at least past round 9 in all of their games. So they find themselves a 4.65 in their favor, a 5.33 given up. My biggest concern for E6 is their control. Evil Geniuses have looked better in their control lately, even though they still have a negative average to to what they gain to versus what they give up. They've been a little bit weak in the hard point, which is good news for Enigma 6, but they've also been really good in the search, which is bad news for Enigma 6. So a couple of things might go their way. Enigma 6, I think, with upset potential to maybe be able to give Evil Geniuses a pretty hefty scare. 100 Thieves are going up against UIU. Don't even worry about this one. This one's not even going to be close. Again, this UIU team is atrocious. I don't get it. They're bad. 171 total overall average. That's the worst hard point average by far. The next closest was Elevates, and that's a total season, and they're at 197 for them. They're at a minus 78.4 differential, UIU are. You do with that information what you will. This team is bad, okay? Let's just go ahead and skip that. Splice LG, this is where I think a lot of eyes are going to be, because let's be honest, this is going to be a barn burner of a set, or at least it should, in my opinion. Splice have been looking relatively okay across every mode with the exception of the control where they've been perfect a 3 and 0 there so far for them and their total season average is actually pretty good at 2.23 to the 1.88 that they give up for LG though they've been finding a lot of favor in the control as well the only loss came to 100 thieves where they lost in round 5 barely it's the best respawn team in the game and they took them to round 5 and almost won the control from them Big moves from LG, but most importantly, their hard point averages are actually also very good. 236.2 to the 196 they give up, a very hefty average of plus 40, and their search and destroy has been right down the middle of the road. They typically go past round 10, with a couple of exceptions. They found a 6-1 versus units, and they lost a 3-6 versus 100 thieves, but generally speaking, they seem to like to go, the, they seem to go at least past round number 9.
And that's not bad, I think, if you're LG. I think the longer that goes on, the more you can allow people like Skies and Brack to start finding some favor. So it should be interesting. Let's take a look and head over to our bookie's worst nightmare. I will let you guys know that while I was looking for spreads, I actually held off on recording this video because I was hoping the websites would update. Nobody's posting the spread bet line. So you're going to see an NA um, not applicable towards all the spread bets because honestly, I just don't know what the lines are going to be. But I'll give you some kind of an idea as far as who might have good spread bets as we go forward because there might be a couple of good ones out there that get posted late. Let's take a look at my scorecard though from what happened on Wednesday. Spread bets have not been my friend the last two days, so be careful with that, I guess I suppose I should say. As Evil Genius is not quite able to find the 3 1 or 3 0 versus units, so you lost that one if you bet the minus 1.5 on EG. But fortunately, the parlay did pay off with EG Splice and 100 Thieves, even though it was a touch close on the 100 Thieves game and the Evil Geniuses game. If you bet it, you still won it, so congrats to you. Let's go ahead and take a look at the breakdown, though, of what teams we have and obviously what we're going to be dealing with for the lines. Again, these are only going to be dealing with match lines as a whole. Units versus phase will be the first one up. Units are, of course, the underdogs, plus 310 are the lines. But again, this team has been good in hard point. My biggest concern comes down to can they find any success in search or control versus a more experienced team in phase. Personally speaking, it would be a very tall ask, I think, for units to find a win, let alone two maps versus FaZe Clan, which is why I have this one going up in favor of FaZe at the tune of a 3-1. Notch this one for our parlay option because I don't see any way that units beat FaZe. Even if it for some reason goes round five, I just can't trust in units to find a surge and destroy win. So lock it in for FaZe for a parlay option. You're going to add that in with one other team, I think, going forward for the games on day four. Match number two, Enigma 6 versus Evil Geniuses. And again, you have to be a little concerned here for Evil Geniuses because this Enigma 6 team is being slept on still. And honestly, they're very, very talented. It just comes down to how much cleanliness can they find in things like the search and the control. For Evil Geniuses, you've been a little bit meager in the hard point. You found more flavor and success in search and your control pool is getting a little bit wider. However, you're struggling when it comes to hard point where Enigma 6 is thriving. Yes, they're only two and three in the record and the lines are relatively even. The favorite is still Evil Geniuses at minus 155. Enigma 6 will be going at minus 111. Again, showing how this game really could go either way. So for this one, I've got Evil Geniuses winning it, but it will be in map number 5, I believe. I just cannot, again, trust that Enigma 6, if they can send it to map 5, will win the search and destroy. Evil Geniuses, I can't trust you to win a respawn in hardpoint, but I trust your control over a team like Enigma 6. So I think this one will be a 3-2, if not a 3-1. Personally, though, if the spread bet looks good, if it does pop up for Enigma 6, if it's sitting at somewhere around plus 120, 150, you take that. I think the spread bet will be a pretty favorable line for Enigma 6. So if it ends up being good for you, suggest taking it. I'm not going to put it down as a listed one for today because, again, it just comes down to the simple fact that we don't know what the, bet, the bets were going to look like uh, for that line specifically. Back half of the day, UYU going up against 100 Thieves. Not much to talk about here. This UYU team is god-awful. They've been looking okay in search, but it's been just okay. 100 Thieves wins this one 3-0. Mimic what I said about FaZe Clan when it comes to the parlay bet here. You want FaZe and 100 Thieves in a parlay option because that's the only way you're going to make money today, I think. This because the lines are not super favorable for anything else. Going to the bottom half of the day, or the last match, rather, of the day, the Barn Burner of Luminosity versus Splice. And this one's going to be a hard one to call. Splice are the favorites, minus 120 for your worth, plus 102, just about beyond even money if you want to bet the match winner for Luminosity. My biggest thing for this LG team is they have been very good in respawn and they're starting to get scary in search and destroy. 4-1 and one in hardpoint, 2-1 and one in control with a round 5 loss to 100 Thieves, and then search and destroy, again, they've been pretty darn good at. For Splice, yeah. You've been finding some good matches throughout this week. However, I don't think Luminosity are going to gift you hard point on Seaside. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to keep you away from any close and quarter battles and they try to win this one face up. This is a very big grudge match coming between these two teams. Both have a lot to prove. It's essentially for me and I think for a lot of people who won Roster Mania. I think it kind of comes down to this set right here. And personally, because I think LG are going to have the brains and they're going to be able to match up on the other maps and modes throughout a lot better than Splice have looked, I've got Luminosity as the upset potential here. And I'm going to mark this as my first ever favorable bet line. I feel pretty strongly that Luminosity will take this set. 
Yes, Huke, Temp, and Jerd are very scary. However, sometimes they're not. And Luminosity as a full unit has been getting better and better and better. That set versus 100 Thieves today really showed you exactly what their potential is. A very strong competitor for potentially a top four spot when it comes to Miami once there's practice. In this matchup, I think Splice has more overall work to do than Luminosity does. So I'm favoring Luminosity just being the more consistent and more complete team. Do I think that Splice maybe has them higher potential later? Maybe. But in the moment, right now, I think Luminosity take this. I've got it going 3-2 for them. I think you should jump on that plus 102 line if you have the ability to do so. It should be a pretty good one. For, so for the scorecard for you guys, what I have lined up, upset pick Luminosity for the plus 102 or whatever you find, wherever betting website you use, versus Splice. And then the parlay bet of FaZe and 100 Thieves together, I think is a pretty favorable option as well. It's, you know, it's not going to pay out much, but it's... It should be some pretty free money for you, even if it is marginal. So those are my two bets that are going for you guys. Again, one more recap coming up before we get to Friday and Saturday where we'll be doing another Power Rankings featuring all the teams that played this week. So again, if you like that kind of style of content, make sure you subscribe. Hit the notification bell on the way out to get that little blip in the top right of when my videos do pop up. We're so close to 10K subs. So I do encourage if you are out there, please try to consider hitting that sub button. It would be great. That's all I got for you guys. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. We'll catch you for the recap tomorrow. Until then, hope you keep holding it down. Later, later. Bye-bye.